In this video, we'll talk about how to estimate the area under a curve with Riemann sums. So there are two big sort of graphical concepts that calculus helps us tackle. And the first is a derivative, and a derivative tells us the slope of a tangent line. The other key graphical thing that we can do with calculus is find areas under a curve. And we're going to start that process today. So I want to motivate this with an example. Let's let f of x be x squared plus 1. And the question is, how can we find the area under the curve? And what I mean by under the curve is between the curve and the x-axis over the interval from 1 to 9. So let's first draw a picture of this. So if I label my function y equals x squared plus 1, and now I draw some axes. So my y-axis, my x-axis. I know this is a parabola upward facing, and the plus 1 shifts it up one unit. So it'll be something like this. So x squared plus 1 looks something like this. And I want the area between the curve and the x-axis over the interval from 1 to 9. So let's label 1 and 9 on the x-axis. I'll draw some vertical lines. So we want to know the area under the curve. That just means the area under the curve, but above the x-axis, or between the curve and the x-axis. So we're after this sort of curved area. So our idea is going to be to first try to approximate this, approximate the area using shapes that I know how to find the area of, like rectangles. So we're going to approximate that area using rectangles. OK, so let's get to part A of the example. We're going to estimate the area with four rectangles using right endpoints. All right, so let me begin by drawing a picture and showing what it means when we're going to use four rectangles with right endpoints. So I'm going to draw a picture of my parabola. I'm mostly just focusing in on the part of it that we care about, which is the part of the first quadrant. And I'm going to label these endpoints at 1 and 9. And now I need to split up my interval into four pieces, because I want to use four rectangles. So I'll split it up in halves, and then I'll split it up into quarters. So now I have four of these sub-intervals. So when it says to use the right endpoint, what that means is in each sub-interval, start at the right endpoint of it, and then draw vertically until I hit my curve. And once I do, that is how tall my rectangle is going to be. So then I make a horizontal line over the sub-interval, and then I draw a line down, and there I have approximating rectangle. And I'm going to call the area of this one A1. So I go to the next sub-interval. Its right endpoint is over here. I'm going to draw up until I hit the curve. And then I draw a horizontal line for the top. And then I finish my rectangle. And I keep going like this. So this is, I'm going to call this area A2. So in the next sub-interval, here's the right endpoint. Draw a vertical line and then a horizontal line. There's my rectangle. This will be A3. And then in the last sub-interval, here's the right endpoint. Draw vertically till I hit the curve. Then a horizontal line. Then I finish my rectangle. This area I'll call A4. OK, so we want to be able to find the areas of these four rectangles and then add them up. OK, so that is how we're going to do this estimate. And this estimate has a special name. It is called a Riemann sum. It is called a Riemann sum. So one of the things I'll need to know is, well, how long is each of these subintervals? What's the length of each subinterval? And in this problem, I may be able to tell just by looking at it, but the whole interval from 1 to 9, that has a length of 8, because that's 9 minus 1. And I just got to divide that whole length by the number of pieces I'm splitting it up into. And I'm splitting this up into four pieces. OK, so if I divide 8 by 4, that would give me this distance. I'm going to call this delta x, and that ends up being 2. OK, so the, what I just did is I did 9 minus 1 for the length of the whole interval and divide it by the number of pieces. In this case, it's 4. It's OK, I'm going to call this delta x, and that ends up being 2. So the formula in general for this, for delta x, the general formula is that delta x will be equal to b minus a over n, where where the interval that we're looking at is from a to b, and n represents the number of rectangles. So I'm going to put a little bubble around this. All right. So now that I know the length of the subinterval is 2, if it starts at 1, that means this next tick mark is at 3. 
And then if I go two units over again, I get to five, and two units over again, I get to seven, and another two units would put me at nine. And that's good, that's matching up with where it is supposed to end. Okay, so let's find this total area. So our total area is going to be A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. So to get the area of that first rectangle, I need to know its base, which is 2, times its height. And to get the height of the rectangle, I, I'm going to plug in 3 into the function, because that'll tell me the y value at this point. Okay, so I need to, I need to know what, what is f of 3. Okay, so this first two, this represents the base. And the f of 3, that represents my height. Okay, so doing the same thing for each of these. For the next rectangle, the base is still 2. But I have to plug in 5 into my function to get the height. So the height is going to be f of 5. And for the next rectangle, the base is 2. The height would be f of 7. And for the last rectangle, the base is 2. And the height is going to be f of 9. Okay, so I'm going to work at one of these heights slowly and the rest quickly. Okay, so I get 2 times f of 3. So if I plug 3 into my formula for my function, I'll get 3 squared plus 1. So f of 3. f of 3 equals 3 squared plus 1, which is 10. So that's going to be the height of that first rectangle. So 2 times 10. And then I get plus 2 times f of 5. If I plug 5 into my function, I get 26. Plus 2 times, if I plug 7 in, we get 50. And then plus 2 times, if I plug 9 in, we get 82. And if we work out what this is, we'll get 336. And that is my total area. So if I look at my picture, that, that because the rectangles extend over the curve, so I'm going to shade in that portion where they extend over the curve, this is going to overestimate the actual area since our rectangles extend above the curve. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bubble around that. Okay, so next I'm gonna introduce some notation. We are gonna denote R subscript N as the approximate area when we use right endpoints and N rectangles. So with that notation and the problem we just worked out, we did right endpoints with four rectangles and our approximate area that we got was 336. So that's how I would write my answer with this notation. Okay, so we can also find the area using left endpoints, and that's what I want to do in part B. So I'm going to begin by drawing a very similar picture. So I'll have some axes, I'll draw my curve, I'll make my interval from 1 to 9, I'll split it up into four pieces. And when I do that, just like before, I know this is going to be 3, 5 and 7. The length of each of these subintervals is still going to be 2, because I'm still using four rectangles. But this time in each subinterval, I'm going to use the left endpoint to determine the height. So the left endpoint in the first interval is 1. I draw a vertical line until I hit my curve. That tells me how high the rectangle is. Then I draw a horizontal line, and then a line down, and that finishes my rectangle. In the second subinterval, the left endpoint is at 3. So I draw a vertical line until I hit the curve. And then I draw a horizontal line across, and then a line down, and that's my second rectangle. If I keep going in this way, the third rectangle would look like this to the left end point, And the fourth rectangle would look like that. Okay, and I'm going to label the areas again. It's A1, A2, A3, and A4. So with right end points, we use the notation R subscript N. With left end points, we're going to use the sub notation L for left. And then we're using four rectangles here. So this would be L4. So in my picture, L4 is A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. So for the area of the first rectangle, the base is 2. And the height is going to be F of, I use the left end point, 1 to plug in to get the height. Okay, in the next rectangle, the base is 2, and we multiply that by the height, which is going to be f of 3. In the third rectangle, we'll get 2 times f of 5, and in the last rectangle, we'll get plus 2 times f of 7. So we're just doing base times height for each of these. So one, one thing that I'm going to do to make my co uh, 
computation a little bit easier is I notice all these terms have a two. If I factor it, we're gonna get two times f of one plus f of three plus f of five plus f of seven. So I factored out the base because it's common to all of these. Okay, so notice that this two, this is just my delta x, that's the length of my subinterval. So we'll get two times f of one, it turns out is two, if I plug one into my function. We've already found f of three, f of five, and f of seven. Uh, so I'll get plus 10, plus 26, and plus 50. Whoops, I had a bracket, so let me close that bracket. So this is two, if I work it out, times 88. Oops, bracket, two times 88. And that is 176. Okay, and if I look at my picture, is this gonna overestimate or underestimate? So this is going to this is gonna under approximate the true area since the rectangles all lie below the curve. Okay, so we can also approximate the area using midpoints. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a picture of this one as well. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my axes. Let me give myself a little bit more room here. So y axis, x axis. So we'll have the parabola, our intervals from one to nine. Okay, so let's split it up into four pieces again because I want four rectangles. And I know this is three, this is five, and this is seven. So now when I do midpoints, I'm gonna take the midpoint of this first subinterval. So that is two. And then I am gonna draw a vertical line at two until I hit the curve. And that'll tell me how tall my rectangle is. So now I draw a horizontal line across my subinterval for the, for the top, and then lines down to make my rectangle. So similarly, the midpoints in the other intervals are, this is four, this is gonna be six, and at eight, so now I draw a vertical line at these midpoints until I hit the curve. That tells me how tall my rectangle is gonna be, then a horizontal line across, and then lines down to finish my rectangle. All right, so if I do the same thing in these last two, I draw lines up to see how tall is my rectangle. And then I make the tops. Ooh, that one, ooh, let me fix that one. I don't like that one. I'm gonna draw a little bit longer a little bit longer, so it stretches all the way across the subinterval. And same thing here in this last one. All right, so we got, we have our picture. And now, because we're using midpoints, this notation, I'm gonna call this one M for midpoint, and then I'll put four as a subscript, because I'm using four rectangles. So we'd get M4 equals, and if I use the idea from the last one, where I factored the, the base out, where I factored this two out, let me jump straight to that step. I'll get two, because that's my base, factored out, and what are gonna be my heights? To get the height of the first rectangle, I plug two into my function, so f of two. For the next rectangle, I would have f of four, and then it's gonna be f of six, and then f of eight. And if we work these out, we'll get two times. Five plus 17 plus 37 plus 65. This is two times 124, which is 248. Okay, so this is gonna over or underestimate the actual area. So I want you to pause the video for just 30 seconds and see if you can figure out, hmm, will this over or underestimate the actual area? Four, three, two, one. Pause the video for 30 seconds to think about that. All right, so to answer that question, it's gonna be helpful to draw just one of these rectangles, but a little bit more zoomed in. So I'm gonna draw a zoomed in, that just means a bigger, a bigger picture. Okay, so I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw some axes. And I'm gonna draw this, this shape, this parabola shape, and I'm just gonna draw one of these rectangles. Oh, um, Okay, so let's say I have, let's say that this is my midpoint, and at that midpoint, I were to draw straight up, and this is how tall my rectangle is gonna be. So now I'm gonna draw the height, so I'll go a little bit this way to get the height in this direction, and I'll go a little bit this way to get the height in this direction. Okay, and if I draw down, I get a rectangle like this. But if I look at this rectangle, this rectangle, part of it is above the curve, so this part is above the curve, 
but there's also part of the rectangle that is below the curve. So all of this is below the curve. And look at my picture, that red area where the rectangle is below the curve is way bigger than this purple area where the rectangle is above the curve. So as a result, this will under approximate, this under approximates the area. And what sort of causes that to happen is the fact that this graph is concave up. And as we said, the fact that the graph is concave up, that's what contributes to this purple area being less than the red area. Okay, so I want to end this video with two important notes. So, so far what we've talked about is just approximating the area under a curve. So the first note will say that the more rectangles we use, because we just did this with four rectangles, but the more we use, the better our estimate becomes. So for example, if I drew my axes and I drew our parabola, and we had this interval from one to nine, if we were to use eight rectangles, eight rectangles, I would split this up into halves, and then quarters, and then eighths. If we were to use eight rectangles, it turns out the length of each of these subintervals would be one. So this would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now if we were to draw these right endpoint rectangles, here's the first one, here's the second one. Notice that the amount that they're overestimating the actual area by is a lot smaller than it used to be. Okay, so we'd have, there's our seventh rectangle and our eighth rectangle. So the more rectangles we have, the better our estimate becomes. Compare this to what the picture looked like when we just had four rectangles. Um, this red region that's above the curve that has a bigger area than what we have in this picture. This blue region that's above the curve is a lot smaller. Okay, and the final note that I want to make is that ultimately our goal is going to be to get the exact area. Oops, looks like I wrote get twice. And to do that, we will take the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. We'll let there be infinitely, infinitely many rectangles. So we will see that in a future video in this section.